let us now look at conditional logics in shell scripts. In the last line of the script, we run the rocket status command to test the status of the script. Now, this command returns the status of the rocket, which could be uh, one of the following launching if the launch is in progress, success if the launch is successful, and failed if the rocket crashes and the mission is failed. Now, if the launch failed, we must check why it failed. For this, run the rocket debug command and it will tell exactly why. We now have a requirement to modify our script to take this into consideration. So we add the rocket debug command to the end of the script. However, we only want it to run if the rocket status is failed. If the launch is successful, we don't want it to run the debug command. We want our script to behave differently based on a condition. And so we use a conditional logic. Using a conditional logic, we can define whether to run a line of code in the shell script based on a condition. For that, we use an if statement. The if statement is written just like how you would say it in real life. If a condition is met, then do something. The if block starts with the if statement in the first line, followed by a condition, which we will see in a moment, followed by the then statement, under which you will specify the lines that you wish to run if the condition is met, and then the block is closed by the fi statement. fi is obviously if in the reverse order. The if block starts with the if statement and ends with the fi statement. Now, every block opened in a shell script has an associated closing statement like this. You will see this pattern of using a keyword such as if to open a block and the reverse of that keyword such as fi to close the block in various different uh, blocks in, in shell scripts. Let us now look at the condition. The condition of an if statement is encapsulated under a pair of square brackets. Within the square brackets, we must define the check to see if the rocket status is failed. We run the rocket status command in the previous line and uh, we also have the output of the rocket status command stored in the rocket status uh, variable. So that's convenient. Within the condition, we perform a check to see if the value of rocket status variable is failed and we can get the value using the dollar sign like this. When the script is now run, it starts from the first line and executes the commands line by line. When the if statement is reached, the script compares the value in the rocket status variable to see if it is equal to failed. If the launch was successful, the status is not failed, so the condition is not met. If so, the commands uh, within the if block are not run. If the launch is failed, then the condition is true and the script proceeds to execute the commands within the block. You can also add an else if statement within the if block. It's not called as uh, else if though, instead it's called lf. This way, if the first check fails, it performs the second check and if that is successful, executes the commands within that block. Now remember, the second condition is only checked if the first condition was not true. And finally, you can add an else block at the end that will be run if none of the above conditions are met. Now let's take a closer look at the comparison statements. Now note that the comparison statement should be within square brackets and there should be at least one space between the brackets and your statement as well as between the operator and the values on either side. The equals operator is only to be used to compare strings as we compared the rocket underscore status uh, variable earlier with the string failed. To check if the status is not equal to failed, we use the not equals operator. To compare numeric values, use the dash eq operator. To check if uh, two numbers are not equal, then use the dash ne operator. To check if a number is greater than another one, use the dash gt operator for greater than. And similarly, to check if a number is less than another one, use the lt um, operator. Now, there's another way of specifying a conditional operation, and that's using double square brackets like these. 
This works similar to the single pair of square brackets that we have just seen, except that it's an enhanced version and supports additional operations like matching patterns using expressions, and they are a bash extension, so only works in bash or other supported modern shells. The first example here checks if string 2, that is uh, BC, is within string 1, ABCD. The star on either end of BC means that there could be anything on either side of it uh, in string 1. The string ABCD contains the string BC, so it evaluates to true. Note that uh, when you specify the pattern, you must not put them inside uh, double quotes like this. The second one is also an example of pattern matching, where we check if the string ABC matches the pattern specified on the right, where the first two characters are A and B, but the third character could be C or D. That's why C or D is within a pair of single square brackets. So both these conditions would be true. However, the next one, where the third character is E, uh, would return false because it's not either C or D. The last two operators uh, match the sort order. So these only work within square brackets. Now these are not greater than or less than symbols that can match numbers as you would expect. Instead, these compare the position of these strings if they were sorted alphabetically. Say we were to sort both of these strings um, in an alphabetical order and the number and we number their pro, uh, positions, then this operator matches the position of that string after it's sorted. So BCD uh, would come after ABC. So ABC would have a position of 1 and BCD would have a position of 2 uh, when they are sorted alphabetically. So 1 is uh, not greater than 2, so this would return false. Uh, in this case, 1 is less than 2, so uh, this would return true. Let's look at AND and OR operators. So say you have two conditions and you need to check if both of them are uh, or either of them is true. For this, we use the AND and OR operators. So to check if both conditions are true, use the double ampersand sign between the two conditions like this. And to check if either one is true, use the double uh, pipe symbol like this. So this is for AND and this is for um, OR operator. So this is how you would do it if you were using the single a square bracket format. If you were using the enhanced uh, double square brackets format, then you could use the, the AND and OR operators within a single pair of double square brackets like this. So in this case, you don't need the, you don't need to separate the two conditions into two separate pair of double brackets. You could do it within a single one. Okay, so here are some examples. To check if a value is greater than 4 and less than 10, um, that's the first one. And here's an example of uh, a check where we are checking if a value is greater than 4 or uh, less than 10. So there are some file level operators as well. For instance, the dash E operator checks if a file exists. The dash D operator checks if the given path is a directory. The dash S uh, operator checks if the file has a size greater than 0. Uh, the dash X operator checks if the file is executable and the dash w operator checks if the file is writable.